Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope you're having an incredible day. Now today guys, I'm going to be talking to you about the top five houseplants that are merely bug magnets. Now this is only on my experience on the type of houseplants that I've grown over many, many years. And these are what I find are the top five uh, plants that are prone to it. Many people say other different types of house plants, but these are going to be mine. And what I'm also going to be doing as well is sharing links um, both up above in the um, little information sign there and also at the end of this video on the end screen cards on lots of um, videos I have made in the past on how to actually treat a mealybug on your house plants. So this isn't just a video where I'm going, right, there you go guys, these are the top five house plants that are mealybug magnets and then go up, then go. Um, I'm actually sharing how you can treat um, the mealybugs on your plants as well from obviously my experience over the years and what's worked for me without the chemical measure. So here we go guys, if you want to know what are the top five house plants that are mealybug magnets, let's get going. Let's go to number one. Cacti and succulents. Now, I bet you guys aren't surprised to hear that. Cacti and succulents are definitely, in my opinion now, the number one for attracting mealybugs. And if you grow any type of cacti and succulents, especially cacti, it's, you know, over time you're going to find this very annoying pest. And as I say, just to show you a little bit of selection, a little bit dark outside, that's why maybe the light is not brilliant, but you will see um, lots of different types of cacti here in the window and uh, also different types here, lots of different succulents as you can see, many different varieties and you really do find mealybug is the biggest pain. That With cacti the most common common type of definitely um, mealybug prone uh, cactus would be the uh, prickly pear, um, the apuntia, there's an apuntia microdaces there, looking a bit shriveled because it's coming through the winter but they are very, very, very prone to um, mealybugs, definitely. And also mammillarias, for example, this one here, the mealybug, like to hide in between. Happy to say that they're all mealybug free in my collection at the moment, but obviously like anybody who grows cacti and succulents, they're impossible to eliminate completely, so you're always gonna have this pest. As I say, using neem oil um, as a foliar drench and also as a root, a soil drench, used regularly really 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 does help to prevent definitely prevent and over time get rid of uh, mealybugs so i've made a video on how to use neem oil a horticultural grade obviously neem oil on your cacti plants both as a foliar and a soil dredge and links up above to that video so if you have this on your cacti and succulents which you will do I'm sure if you grow these plants in the future, do check that video out. It will really help you guys. It's been an absolute godsend to use neem oil, especially in our polytunnel. You can see out there, which is the majority of cacti, um, really does help. As I say, not just with the, the neem oil helps, not only with the mealybug, but also with spider mite, which is another very common pest with uh, cacti. But I'm going to make a separate spider mite uh, video in the future on what house plants attract spiders. I'm also going to make a separate video on the cacti individually, on the top five cacti that are mealybug magnets, as well as the top five succulents as well. But this is just a house plant once. This is all in general um, as, as, a, as a bit of a video to start it off on this bit of a video vlog series. As I say, mammillaria and the apuntures tend to be the most prone, but all cacti are very prone Two, um, mealybug. No, no, no cacti will escape the dreaded mealybugs. And succulents, echeverias, personally, in my opinion, are really, are definitely mealybug magnets. And definitely out of all the succulents, echeveria is very attractive. Also jade plants, commonly known as the, uh, crust, so the crassula ovatus, um, the jade plant is also very, very easily uh, mealybug prone too. But as I say, I'll include that when I do a separate video on the top five succulents that are mealybug magnets. And uh, yeah, definitely, and, and stapelias as well. I'll just show you what stapelias look like. 
Now these are Stapelias and these are also very common uh, succulent plants in people's collection but they, I'm not kidding you guys, these are definitely mealy bug magnets. They like to hide in all the little nooks and crannies on, on Stapelias and we've got some little Stapelia seedlings here that we've grown from seed. These are always coming down with it. And here as well, this is one of um, one of my partner Hans's um, amazing stapelias here, Grandiflorus, has the most incredible flowers on it in the summer. But it's always um, happy to say, I can say the last year, we've not had any problems with mealybug, but they always do come down with it. They really are so prone. But as I say, since using the neem oil, fantastic absolutely at um, preventing and also treating it. When you use the neem oil, I mentioned more in that video, it's not an instant fix. It, it, it actually does disrupt the whole insect's breeding and it, that's why you can't just use neem oil once like you can with some of these systemics or these um, these sprays, the contact sprays. It, it works slower but it's, it's really harmless to bees and other types of wildlife as well as to humans. In fact neem oil is absolutely fantastic to use for skin care. It actually does the plants good. The, it actually does also give them nourishment as well so it's just fantastic and uh, very very economical to use as well so um, you must check out that neem oil video it's just been a, a miracle for keeping mealybug as well as spider mite at bay but as i say stapelias are the, the definitely a really high a really high succulent plant for attracting mealybugs number two would be hoya plants and they're also a type of succulent as well, but I think they deserve their own type of uh, category of their own because they, they have many, 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 many different types of Hoya plants. This is a very common one, the Hoya Kerry, also known as the Sweetheart Hoya. Sweetheart plant, absolutely beautiful heart-shaped leaves. As you see, ours is a nice little vine. I'm going to be repotting that into a little hanging basket in the spring. Beautiful plant, but it is so, Hoyas are so prone to mealybugs. They seem to really love to go in between the joins on the um, stems in between the leaves there. So if you have Hoya plants, do check in between. And it's always underneath. They Mealybug always hide where you can't see them. I do show we have quite a few different Hoyas there. This is one of our other Hoyas here. A few different types and as I say, excuse the lighting, it's there, they're under the grow lights at the moment, so it's a pink glow. Always sort of hide in between these stems there. So you must, if you have Hoya plants, you must regularly check for signs of um, pests under the leaves and in between the, uh, in between the leaf segments there. Now number three, just has to be orchids. Personally, in my experience, orchids are very, very prone to mealybugs, as I'm sure a lot of you guys who watch my videos who grow orchids, and there's lots of you who do, I know, and I know who you guys are, uh, they, they, I'm sure you'll agree here that orchids are certainly not immune to mealybugs. And I have to say, out of all the orchids, I'm not an orchid expert, so you orchid guys who uh, watch my videos please share what you think is the most common orchid for personally getting mealybug but in my experience it has to be phalaenopsis uh, they are just phalaenopsis seem to really attract mealybugs in between the leaves and i've lost count of how many me uh, sorry how many phalaenopsis i see for sale in garden centers and uh, shops that always seem to have mealybug already on them and because they hide in between the the leaf joins and many people who don't know what mealybug is or have not seen it before wouldn't know and it's a perfect way to introduce it into your collection as i say um, the neem oil works absolutely fantastic with all types of my orchids um, especially with the phalaenopsis and i uh, just want a quick tour around of all my fowls here absolutely blooming beautiful at the moment i've got my dendrobium uh, nobili at the back there absolutely blooming beautiful so i'm um, happy to share this at this moment of time with you on this video something nice and pretty rather than just talking about mealybugs and number four is african violets um, also known as saint polia and these very beautiful very common house plants we have quite a few here in our little window, in our living room. A little baby one on the propagation. They, are, I mean, they have the most incredible flowers and I said they're a very, very popular houseplant. But they are definitely, in my experience, mealy bug magnets. So if you have um, African violets in your collection, do check regularly under, not just on the leaves, but also underneath the leaves as well because it's often underneath where these mealy bug nests hide. So do check that out. Check your African violets very carefully. If you find that the leaves are shriveling on them, then it's nearly always down to hidden mealybugs 
under the leaves and in between, in between the little stems. Now number five would be the very common house plant, the philodendron. And there's lots of different types of philodendrons and they always form these amazing vines here that just grow everywhere. We have ours all wrapped round uh, the living room uh, po pole here at the top where we don't normally have curtains but we have living curtains instead. And they're amazing, amazing house plants. But as I say, they seem to really be mealy bug, mealy bug magnets. And thankfully this one here is mealy bug free. Had mealy bug many times in the past and you nearly always find it in between sort of here where the, the new leaves have come out of. Really is a, just a magnet really, especially on there too. So if you have philodendrons, again, keep it in mind to keep a good eye out on for the dreaded mealy bug. And um, as I say, I've made many videos on how to treat mealybug naturally by using neem oil and also by using rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. Personally, my experience, the neem oil works very well as long as you keep it up. And I'll explain more in that video. So as I say, all them videos to how to treat um, mealybugs will be at the end of this video. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And what do you think about the dreaded mealybugs? And what house plants have you got in your collections that seem to be really prone to these horrible annoying pests? And obviously one of the most commonest pests that you can get on house plants. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you want to know a little bit more on how to grow cacti and succulents, then please do check out my website, desertplantsofavalon.com. And if you haven't done already, please do subscribe and don't forget to click that notification bell. Ding, ding. So guys, I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of plant power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye. Let's blitz them horrible mealy bugs.